The Rain Man. Hey, hey, what's happening, man? How you doing today? I'm doing great. How are things, sir? Man, things are great, man. Thank you for asking. Things are things are really good, though. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you and you need, need no introduction, introduction also, also, Sean Kemp. Camp. Six straight all-star appearances. You miss an opportunity to run for mayor of Seattle. I mean, the election was the other day. You know, Durkham wasn't going for re-election. We could have written you in. You would have ran this city. Man, hey, it looked like we need some leadership in some of those areas. <laughs> that was your chance. No, thank you. I don't want that type of pressure. I was going to say, there's some jobs that, that they are above me. Not only would I not pass the background check, but some jobs I don't want nothing to do with. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't need them digging back in my Twitter feed. <laughs> no, it's um, it's good to hear you guys. I've I've heard you guys' voices so many times, so it's good to to, to finally put a face with your voices. Dude. Oh, thank you. No, absolutely. Dude. What do you think? Oh, Get her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, you, you don't understand what that means to us because we're in. You know, you you would be on the court playing in front of thousands and then your your games and stuff will be broadcast to millions so you you know when people see you and, and watch what you yeah. work with we're in the studio it's just us there's no windows we don't know who or if anybody is listening and then we'll right. find out that a seattle icon a legend royalty like yourself actually wastes time with people like us <laughs> Bro, i don't know I, I don't you know it's like I mean, unfathomable well, I, well the thing about it is this i think like if you're you're part of a community, a part of a city, you have to um, have to learn those things, man. You gotta you gotta listen to the radio station. You gotta see what's kind of going on out there, especially when you're doing business. All those things become important because your your knowledge of knowing people is everything. So I can go back into details and tell you, I can remember one morning you guys were talking about. Uh, I think you guys do like the dating thing where the people call in and they. Yeah. Everybody say, I like this guy or that guy or this girl or that girl. I yeah, forget. crush I on you. Huh? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's so funny. Come on, man. Love <laughs> wow. it. Love it. Absolutely. I can't believe you get your news from us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Love it all. So much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I hope you were, I know you were busy at the time when you were opening up the cannabis shop down the right. road from the mm -hmm. station, but I hope you heard us letting everybody know, hey, the grand opening is tomorrow. Hey, the grand opening is today. I did. Today. I did. Thank you. Thank Good. you very much. Good. You know, I just, we, uh, it has just been some work, but I'm actually... You know, I've enjoyed doing the business. Um, first of all, I enjoy being downtown, uh, seeing and meeting so many more people uh, now. But the thing about it is that this is a business that I plan on growing. So right. I didn't just do one store. So you'll see my brand grow pretty quickly. So I can't tell you all the, the likes of it because I've signed paperwork already, not to say anything, but we're growing pretty fast. We'll have uh, numerous stores in this area from Tacoma, to the probably university district. So mm -hmm. we've been on it pretty good. It's something that I took serious. Um, you know, I didn't just uh, do this, just to open up the pot store. You know, one of my main interests to do in uh, the cannabis stores was into medicine. You know, one of the things I've been trying to do is just to be able to be attracted to people who don't really smoke pot. There's so mm -hmm. many other benefits from cannabis. Mm -hmm. You don't have to smoke weed to come in my shop to buy products. We have numerous products from lotions to creams to things you can take a bath in to all kinds of muscle relaxers things of that nature so and that's that's what i want to be attracted to uh, i think in the community not necessarily about smoking pot or, or, or the weed aspect of it it's a good looking shop both inside and out my buddy weirdo did the mural um oh, yeah. he did a great mural of you on the outside Absolutely. we drive past camps cannabis every day and it is probably one of the most busy cannabis shops if not the busiest one in seattle there's always people there there's always people going in and out no no thank you thank you it's a lot of fun like i said i am um, i enjoy being downtown i meet so many people on a daily basis and then and also having a, a good crew that works for me is everything i think uh, the way that you treat people is how they come back to you mm -hmm. and let me just say i'm sure you get this all the time too but you 100 percent missed an opportunity <laughs> to call it like Sean Kemp's hemp or Kemp's hemp. Well the, well, the thing about that, and I can tell you guys this, is that this is a cannabis story. And then the thing of hemp is that hemp doesn't really go into cannabis because it's not an ingredient in cannabis. So yeah, I actually, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does sound good. But I think, um, you know, what you'll see like in the future, as I'm doing with this concert here, this is called a Rain Man Fest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I can already tell you this, that I'm working on a Kemp, Kemp Fest. A I Kemp, like it. A Kemp, a Kemp okay. Fest. 
I am already working on a Kim Fest uh, for uh, 420 next year with some real big heavy hitters in it. Okay. Well, you're oh, welcome yeah. for the name because I know you didn't have that prior to <laughs> before what I yeah. said. What well, I said. Well, I, will, I will. I will tell you this. I um. I like that name also, so I went and bought it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There it's you a say. great mind stick a lot. <laughs> hey, so you brought up the Rain Man Fest. Let's go into it, man. You tapped in with Wiz Khalifa. You're bringing him out here, putting him on stage at the show. Absolutely, Center. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I um. You know, thanks to you guys, I actually met Wiz at the Summer Jam. Yes. Oh wow! You know, so actually, I attended your summer jam uh, uh, years back, and I was able to meet the Wiz there and uh, some of the people to work for him. So we kind of stayed in touch throughout the years, and that's kind of how I put all this together. Nice, nice. So I know tickets are going on sale Tuesday. That's August um the ninth. I believe they're going on sale tonight, but the yes. show is not till the September nineteenth. That's gonna be really fun. It is. It's, it's, it's not only, and I and I can tell you guys this. Not only do I. I personally want to do shows with like Wiz. I, 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 I've been around this area so much, so I, I want to do shows with rock and roll. I want to do shows in jazz. I want to do shows in, 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 in all kinds of music, man, just just to uh, to be able to uh, reach to the community and give them some fun and, and, and entertainment that they normally don't get. In all areas of music, I would like to have those relationships open to people. You know, and I, I've learned that from being around here in Seattle, uh, being buddies with like Pearl Jam and and different groups in this area, uh, Mac Lamore and these guys. So I, I just, I learned at an early age, man, just to have a, a wide range of friends, yeah. a wide range of music, uh, of listening skills, and then be able to put it together one of these days. So you're friends with Macklemore. Does he return your text messages and DMs? Because he leaves me on red. Every time I DM Macklemore, he pretends like he doesn't have a phone. Like I've never gotten a reply from him, ever. Man, you know what, he's a very busy man. And um, more than anything, uh, you know, I can tell you this about Mac, man. I, I, I kind of started with him with his first show here at Key Arena, back when it was Key Arena years ago. And I kind of seen him grow as a as a young man, and uh, I'm proud of him, man. I think, I think, um, you know, from what I've seen, I've seen him really mature throughout the years, from where he was until what yeah. he's become now. He's a very mature man. Yeah, mm -hmm. we love him, and we're very proud of him as well. Um, I just haven't ever gotten a reply <laughs> on any yeah, DM and, I've hey, sent him. Some, uh, sometimes it's tough. So you got to, like with Nobody Matthew, you gotta, you actually, the best thing with him, man, you have to have like a family connection where you can send these messages through the family and they'll get to him. I got to <laughs> introduce his kids to my son. Yeah. Play dates. Yeah. Play dates. I mean, he's got some cute daughters for sure. Hey, you brought up Key Arena, you know, as someone who spent so much time there, how much does it mean to you that they were able to kind of keep some of the main aspects of Key Arena as they built this climate pledge. Well, absolutely. I mean, the, where Key Arena is, is in, in Queen Anne. And the, the, the reason that I wanted that arena to be over there, again, is because for so many years, the Sonics had been over there for 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. So imagine the type of workers that they had working for them, not just the organization of the Sonics, but also uh, the Seattle Center of how many workers you know, a lot of people that lived in that community was working there at Seattle Center. This was, this was their job. Yeah. So those jobs were taken away automatically when the Sonics left town. Yeah. So yeah. to me, it's happy to see some of these people finally be able to go back and get some of the work that they probably did for a lot of years in that area. I'm sure a lot of them depended on that money. And then, I mean, there were so many restaurants and things of that nature in the Queen Anne area that's just kind of left. It'd be glad to see some of those things come back to that area and they, uh, they have their spirit picked back up again. Did you watch the uh, Michael Jordan Last Dance documentary on ESPN? Absolutely, absolutely. It was, it was so cool to see some of the nostalgia, especially when they were focusing on the Bulls and the Sonics games. Like, right. oh my God, that's Kirina. Oh my God, those are the old Yeah, Jordan. yeah, I agree, I agree. I, um, you know, I can, I can tell you this, when I, when I saw the clip with Michael Jordan, he was, had mentioned about Gary, it wasn't really a problem for him. Of course, I got on the phone calling Gary laughing and giggling about that. I was going to ask you, so are you mad how Gary Payton? Like, yo, oh, my God, yeah, so of course, you know, and, you know, and I was one of those guys at the time, um, you know, Gary was such a good player, but I was one of those guys at the time who used to kind of tease Gary a little bit and get underneath his skin, and I'd be like, yo, there's Michael Jordan over there, what you going to do? I know you, know you can't be scared, you can't be nervous, you know, so. I was wondering, it was always kind of in the background, like chirping at him a little bit, making sure he had his A game on. 
Sean oh, wow. Kemp's like, don't mind me. I'm just stirring the pot. I'm I know. Absolutely. That's, a, that's right. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. <laughs> You're one of those. That's strawberry. <laughs> yeah, I stir the pot strawberry too. is the you of this building. <laughs> you gotta have a little fun with it. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to. The Kraken, who are gonna be the new, you know, residents, the new tenants. And of course, you know, a legend like you was was out there when the Kraken was formed. You were helping announce the names, which probably the hardest thing in sports, aside from hitting a fastball from a major league baseball, yeah. is pronounce a the hockey name. player's name. I would not want to be in your shoes when you were out there <laughs> pronouncing hockey players' names, Sean Kemp. Did you get yeah, to no, practice? But it, it sounds so easy, but once you once you really, you know, when you try to pronounce these game, these guys' names, and you just say to yourself, "Well, let me get somewhere close to it," <laughs> you know. And, uh, and and I was I was just like, "Please give me something easy. Please give me something easy the whole time." Please don't give me like this Russian name with this long accent. Oh my God! Oh man, we took uh, Jonas Denskoy. <laughs> Jonas Donskoy. Did you not see any of the names until you got no, there? Like you had we no idea? Know. We, we didn't know ahead of time until we got right there to the stage. So, you know, it was fun. I'm, I'm happy for the Krakens. I think the spirit of the Krakens coming back to this neighborhood is going to uplift everything. I really do. I think uh, even, you know, even the downtown people. So I, I remember similar, uh, a few years ago, similar when the Sounders came to town. It, yes. it kind of uplifted. It kind of uplifted the whole city a little bit. Mm -hmm. I expect the same for the Krakens, really. And uh, I think it's going to be good for us to see this. Um, you know, I'm a big hockey fan already. I sometimes really? used to, I, I used to sometimes travel up to Vancouver, Canada, just to see the Canucks play. So I, I, oh, wow. I've been watching hockey for a long time. I think hockey guys are probably one of the most talented athletes there is. The same thing these guys do on the basketball court, crossing guys over, these guys actually do on ice. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm a big fan. I'm looking forward to going to most of the games uh, and, and look forward to seeing everybody there. But I think the Crackers are going to be well represented throughout the city. And yeah. I think, oh, um, yeah. you know, coming from their leadership, I also think that they're going to lead away. And you'll see the Sonics be able to follow right in after they are announced. Whoa. You just said it. You just I said it. I was going to say something, too. I was thinking it. John Kemp. I, I, I really do. <laughs> I really do. I think the, the motivation from the Krakens coming into town, I think will lift, uplift the spirit of these people in this community finally to get our team, the Sonics, back also here at this arena. Mm -hmm. so what happens in radio, like we, we get info well in advance on who's going to go on tour, who's going to have a concert, who's putting out new music. Like we get this inside info way before the public because of our industry. You and your industry, what right. inside info do you have about the Sonics return? Do Because you, you're going to hear that stuff before us. Well, I, I think in, in my eyes, and from what I'm seeing, you're seeing a lot of people be quiet about that situation. Mm -hmm. And usually when they're quiet about these situations, it means that there's a lot going underneath. Yes! 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 Uh, there's a lot going underneath. I mean, I'm not a, a professional on this, but I just think we're talking to people in the community I think that the um, the Krakens, once the Krakens are announced and, and, and once they have a team, once these games start, I think one of these mornings we'll, we'll wake up and then they'll be like, hey, mm -hmm. the Sonics are coming back and you're so-and-so, so-and-so. I really do because, okay. I mean, you know, I, you have a brand new arena, which was the problem really the whole time with the Sonics. It was really just about the arena. Mm -hmm. So that arena is about, what, five, six, seven weeks from now being done. Yeah. So I think once once the Krakens finally get in there skating around and stuff, I do, but I I, I do. I think we're going to see the signings be announced one day because now we have this brand new arena and we have the infrastructure of a of a professional team already in that building where they can be able to come in and, and almost duplicate to bring a basketball team inside there. Dude, nice. I want Sean Kemp. <clears throat> I want the Rain Man to be there back at Gasworks Park again. Announcing. Hey, I'll have a bigger shirt on this time, man. I'll have and, a and can they shirt give on. you a bigger shirt? Can oh, my God. The new man, Sonics, I, you know, can they give you a bigger bro. shirt than the Kraken? I tell you, you what, it was. <laughs> they gave me the shirt as I was walking up towards the, the stage, and then I couldn't retrieve my previous <laughs> shirt that I had on. So, in great spirit, being a total team player, I went oh ahead God. and went through the process. But that shirt, yeah, I can feel. I told Gary, I said, man, I think I just felt, felt some air go down the wrong pipe back there. The shirt <laughs> was a little tight. Hypothetically speaking, okay, the Sonics are coming back. Who 
would you want to see on the team? Who do I want to see? No doubt, Kevin Durant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. I would love to see Kevin Durant come back to the city of Seattle where he was drafted and mm -hmm. finish his mm -hmm. career. I think he's done great as a, uh, as a basketball player already. I think he's done great as a businessman. And that's the type of representation that you want for your organization. Yeah, so I if love there's any player that I could, I could say out there in this world that I would want to put that Sonic uniform on, no doubt it would be Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. Man, that would be great. That would be great. Well, the Rain Man said it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so one more time for people. Uh, let's tell them about the uh, the big festival coming up September 19th at Showwear Center. Hey, we're going to be there September 19th. It's Wiz Khalif, Taylor Gang, Erica Banks, um, Cowboy, uh, Cash and King. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. Like I said, I'm, I'm doing this event. I'm hoping to do more. In the future, I'm gonna, I plan on doing one that's three times as big as this in the future. So this is kind of a warm up to what I want to do. But I also plan on doing, um, you know, like I said, different cultures from rock and roll to jazz. And I don't believe in doing one thing. I mean, this is a community that we have a lot of different nationalities in this community. I think we should, you know, definitely show love in all those departments. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you for spending time with us today. And thank you if you ever tune in, whether it's for business purposes or because we make you laugh. We do appreciate the time that you you've made, you've the way you You've made me laugh so much in the morning time before. Um, I can remember the morning when she was talking about this guy in the Camaro. Uh, you remember the morning you were talking about some guy in the Camaro? Who's this? If some girl was, they was trying to date some guy in this Camaro that went to this apartment building. And you've made me laugh plenty mornings. Man. It sounds That's like right. a lot of them. It sounds like <laughs> yeah. a lot of them. I've, so obviously, I've listened to a lot of your shows. So. That's, awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's the Wake Up Show with Strawberry and Lizette Love on Cube 93.3.